Hi everyone, it's time for us to upgrade our solar system. In the beginning of the bus conversion, we were extremely intimidated by the solar power systems out there. We didn't understand that we were overwhelmed with so many other logistics of the bus conversion. So we had a lot of things on our plate and we did a little bit of research and we found many different simple options. And the easiest one was to buy a kit, a solar generator or a power station. Uh, kit. We bought one from Energy, Energy Tech. It's a company that makes solar generators or power station as some people like to call them. So I'll show you the setup that we have right now and then I'm going to start with the installation of this new system. Here's our solar system right now. This is the Energy Kodiak which is the first unit that we got. It has a 1500 watt inverter and it has a 90 amp hour lithium battery. It's also expandable and that's why we got here three AGM batteries. The problem is that this unit, and because we didn't know anything about solar when we started the bus conversion, we didn't know until like we already had the system in place. The problem with it is that the Kodiak max uh, charge is like 12.5 volts. And these batteries need more than that to be 100% charged. Since we had these batteries installed, we have never been able to get 100% of their capacity. So that's one of the problems. And the second issue is that the company was supposed to make lithium batteries to be able to expand this unit, but they never um, got them done. And I think they just recently came up with a system uh, to expand this unit with with their own lithium batteries and they advise not to install all the lithium batteries from 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 third party so we had to expand it with the AGM batteries and it's just it's just not efficient and then since we had to send this a couple of times for repair they ended up giving us a big discount to get a second unit uh, which is the energy apex it's just a uh, a slightly improved version of the Kodiak and we've been using them both switching between uh, both of them uh, right now we're using the Kodiak is being charged by our 500 watt solar panel system and uh, and it's expanded with the 300 amp power FGM batteries now the problem is that because we don't get all the potential, all the capacity from the AGM batteries, we often running out of power. So we always have to be switching uh, to the Apex. And the problem is now sometimes it doesn't turn on. It turns on just fine on DC, but when you want to turn it on on AC, it's just not doing it. Now it turns on, it took a couple of tries, but sometimes can take 10, 20 tries before it turns on so we're gonna have to send it in for repair and just keep both of them the apex and the kodiak as backups because uh, they are really powerful each of them have 90 amp power lithium batteries and so between the two of them that's 180 amp power and you can deplete this uh to 100 percent because they have lithium batteries so now i have to find a space to install the rest of the stuff uh, this right here, this is where we have uh, the fuses for all of our 12 uh, volt DC appliances. And then we have our breaker box back there. All right, so now I'm gonna have to rearrange all of this so that I can install the charge controller and the new inverter. So we decided to get this uh, system, we have a 3000 watt inverter from Renogy. We also got a 30 amp MPPT charge controller. We have all our wires here. Um, the inverter comes with a remote uh, starter and the charge controller comes with a, a Bluetooth uh, module that can help us monitor the battery uh, remotely from our phones using an app. So in the meantime, we are going to install this and eventually we are going to change our, our batteries to lithium. Since our battery bank is very small, 
um, and we cannot afford to buy lithium batteries right now. It's good to have um, the Kodiak and the Apex as backups. All right, so I'm gonna start the installation. All right, so this is where this is gonna go. It's time to connect the batteries to the inverter. This is our power input. This is the cable that is going to help us connect to shore power. So I'll ground is first. Keep positive. This is the hot line. And then we have the neutral. Now it's time to connect the battery. Sensor. Okay. The one goes right here. The one goes right there. And this one goes right here. All right, so now it's time to install the charge controller right here. So the charge controller needs a fuse, a 40 amp fuse, that is gonna go from the positive lead of the charge controller to the positive lead of the battery. All right, we got that one done. The fuse goes here. So those are positive. Now we've got to connect the negative of the battery. Battery negative goes here. That feels secure enough. Now I need to make a butt splice connection. That's gonna go to the positive of the battery. Right here is my uh, 300 amp fuse that goes to the positive of the battery to the positive of the inverter. All right, so now it's time to connect the batteries. So this is coming from the charge controller and this one is coming from the inverter. Okay, as you can see, the battery bank is at 12.3 volts. So we got the battery hooked up to the charge controller and to the inverter. Now it's time to hook up the solar panels. Uh, 
All right, connection is finished. We got the Bluetooth module in place. Uh, so we get everything set up. Tomorrow I'm going to organize things around and uh, leave everything in the place they're supposed to be.